What's up everybody, it's your boy KC, and I'm going to be teaching you today in my YouTube video how to make a prop syringe. This is going to be more of a wasteland style because realistically, if you had the bank for it, you could buy like real ones and stuff like that. But you know, to make some wasteland ones. So I will give you an example of what it will be looking like in general at the end. So in today's video, we're gonna be making this. So right now it has a little plunger in, has a little piece that allows you to press down has a cap, so it looks like we're doing a pen cap and the little needle at the end. Little one, that's funny. So I'm going to show you how to make it. You're gonna that. need three to four things. So you're gonna need a pen. I use a clear one because I want people to see our filling, which I'm using is cellophane. You're gonna need three paper clips. This one's a little broken down, but that one's for our needle. Um, and you're gonna need a lighter. Well, not necessarily, but I recommend using the lighter. A box cutter and a pair of pliers. So for so step one, you're gonna be taking apart your pen. You're going, one thing you're going to not keep is your pen internal. It should look like this when you take it apart. That's just the part of the ink in it. So yeet. I'll show you when I get so the pen. Right now I'm having a bit of trouble with the pen because these are all fresh and brand new. So if you do, just take your take your pliers and just rotate, twist. It's gonna, whoops, gonna give you your least amount of damage to your main body, and boom, it should pull out like that. And depending on how you want to do it, you can either take this cap off and work from the top down, or you can keep this part on. So I just said that twice, but you know. You need to take it off and put it back on, but you still want to keep this end part. That's going to be the end of your syringe. I'm going to keep it on because I'm going to try doing it the other way. See how that works out. So yeah, I'm also gonna separate this. Boom. That's it. So yeah, that should. That's how you get your pen disassembled, just in case. Now that you have this part separated from the rest of your pen, you are going to want to take your lighter and one of these, and you want to take this. Now, this is the original purpose of this. Is, is you're going to take this. And of course, you're gonna to have to be bending this into the loop part. This is a loop part, because this is going to be your plunger portion. It's all floppy, but there's there's a step that I skipped on this one. I'm gonna make that correction later, because I can, but I'm gonna tell you what I forgot when I make this one, that's so you don't make that same mistake. So yeah. So you're gonna take this, you're gonna make your loop. I say make your loop around your finger that you're gonna be using. I'm using my thumb with mine, primarily, because it's the biggest finger that I have. And you know, just be careful. Don't You don't wanna fuck yourself up trying to do this. That's not fun. Then take that little end piece, wrap it around. Boom work up and then if you do it correctly you should be able to wire work way around then you should sit it well whatever thing you pick just to be able to fit in at the end then just power clamp that down boom see now so it fits my thumb now this is the part where you're where I recommend using this because it's because we're working with fire as you see so we're gonna be heating this up at the end. I say hold it for about five, about seven to 10 seconds to make sure it's good and hot. And boom. Then you're gonna press this into the center of this. You should be able to see that. And boom. Now you're just gonna let that sit for a little bit. A little bit. Now, when I said earlier, you don't have to take it off. I'm wrong, because I forgot the part that, so you need to pierce it. Honestly, it's this easier way, and this also helps you prevent from burning yourself hot. But you know, once you let it cool off and all that, then you can, then you have to take that blue part off, but you already got a hole punch, so that's already good set for you. So you let that cool off. And you can take it off if you want to. I'm not going to because there's actually a little bit of measuring I have to do slightly. Oop. So for me, usually how I did it with the other one to help prevent the warping, but that's kind of not possible now. 
Oh, I, I could just undo the pen, but honestly, I don't mind, I don't mind the warping because it's also a white sign syringe, so it's going to look a little warped because it's just old. It's probably used several times. Ooh. It's going to look beat up. I don't care. There we go. I got that off. Now, with this one, now certain ones are different. With this one, this is the pens that I have. It's wider. That's something I didn't realize when I got these pens. That's also what caused the problem that I had. It's not a big issue. Kind of a thing that's like, oh, hey. If it's going to be a problem, it's going to be a problem, but it's it's not. So. Press on distance. You want to measure press on distance with mine? Press on is going just past the big thing. Right for the little man. And that's. It's not particularly super important because I'm already losing a little bit of length. And I'm just curious about where that one's going. This gives me a little bit of a gauge on how far I'm going. Make sure that this is cold before you start touching around here because if it's hot, you're going to burn yourself. That's not going to be fun. So you're going to bend this end just a little bit. Oh, I forgot to mention about the hot glue gun. I'm probably going to, probably when I edit this, you're probably going to see hot glue gun. But yeah, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, you're gonna wanna bend it so it looks a little bit like this, but you're gonna wanna trim that little hooky part off because that's gonna give you handful issues. So it should look like this at the end. Boom. <sighs> so I just reinsert it just so you can see how far it goes down now. Mine goes just shy of the R and round. So yeah. Boom. Now, now the next part that I'm gonna work on because I have my hot glue gun set and ready. Ready is I'm gonna work on the needle. So depending on how you wanna do it, you can have a nice little sharp pointy end. The way I use is the little wire cutter portion of these. I usually just trim it off and then just let it and trim it off like how I did on that part. The blender part. All right, that's so uh, it looks all nice and sharp. If you ever look, here we get to look it up, look at it up close. I really don't care. But yeah, so you want to unfold it. So if you have a full paper clip, like you don't have a cut one, I say take to the first fold and then cut off there. So it gets that first fold, you trim that off. And then you should have a length. Of course, it's gonna be shorter than this. But I say you take it to the first fold and then trim it off like so. Boom. Then shazam. Have your little bit of needle. And then to fill in the space, just fold it over a little bit. And of course, you can fold over or trim as necessary to the length of your needle. I'm having a relatively long needle because. Because for the character that I have, they have a lot of armor, and you're going to want to pierce through that armor if necessary. And you're going to want to still be able to get to those vital organs underneath. It's without having to mess around too much it's on the battlefield. So I'm going to fold this over one more time. Boom. So now there's two ways you can secure it. You can just do force of friction, which is what I'm doing partially with this one. That's not going to be the primary holding force. It's going to be hot glue. But if you're just really pressed for time, you can fold it over a bunch of times and get force of friction. But I'm not worried about that. And and important thing is just to get hot glue into there. There, If it goes all the way up, that's your prerogative. I'm not going to fill it all the way up. I want a little bit of space. Okay, sorry about that. Some someone called me but so what I did off camera was I filled this in with a little bit of hot glue and also our plunger piece I filled in a little bit of hot glue I'm gonna shave it up a little bit better because I don't like how it looks it's a little off off so I'm gonna do that off camera like that little bulb on the other end like this part's good but that part has a little bit of bulb on I'm gonna flatten that down and then I'm gonna leave that alone but I'm saving the part that I hate the absolute most for last, because I hate it. But it's just filling it in with the color that we want. 
I'm gonna do another purple syringe, but I'm gonna make one more. And I'm gonna fill with another color. I'm still gonna decide uh, then, but yeah. So, here we go. Sadly, I'm gonna do it off camera because I'm on camera. Yeah, so I'm gonna let this cool right, so it doesn't drip off and do anything crazy that I don't want. And so you might be wondering what's the purpose of the box cutter. And so we can cut this. If you have scissors, use scissors. I just, I don't have scissors. Don't ask why. Uh, but I do have a box cutter, so I will be using that. So what you're going to do, this is also dependent on how dark you want your fluid to be, but be cognizant that it's gonna be a pain in the neck to get this rolled, unless you unless you have um, certain abilities that I will not be discussing that allow you, allow this process to be more easy for you. So it's gonna be more easy for you. So I just split it into these two pieces because it's gonna be a little bit appropriate for the length that I want. I'm gonna use the slightly larger piece that I cut because I want it to be a little bit darker. And basically, you're just gonna roll it. You're just gonna roll it because you have a cylindrical tube. You're gonna roll it. Another thing, that, another thing that's important to keep in mind is that when rolling it, don't, oh, sorry, when installing it, installing it you don't mind if it crumples because it's going to give it a little bit more of a realistic fluidy type look because you know fluid moves around doesn't necessarily completely fill the space it's going to look a little weird so i say don't be too concerned but you know some people stress over it and if you're ocd then you know deal with your mental health correct it But I'm not too concerned because fluids don't necessarily fill spaces in a completely smooth manner. Like there's bubbles, which is bad for a syringe, but you know. There's no bubbles in my syringe. I'm not trying to kill people. Once you get it in, if it kind of starts acting all wonky and like unfurling itself, don't be too concerned. And also, I need to tone this down a little bit more. Yeah, maybe. Uh, depending on how you're doing this, how you're doing this, you may or may not care for it being all the way up, all the way down. Now remember, if you start this much, and also, if you're concerned about not having a whole bunch of this, also, you can use your box cutter to trim that down. I might trim this one down just because, you know, I want to have a little bit of space. So if so if you are, because I said I was going to do it, if you are, the process I do is I heat up my blade slightly because it makes it easier to cut plastic if it's hot. It's like a hot knife through butter, hot knife through plastic. Just heat it up, hold it for about 15, 20 seconds just to get hot enough. Please be very, very careful when doing this. And every working with fire, know what's around you, what's flammable, what's not flammable about that. And then, because we have our needle installed, which makes, actually helps a lot. I say cut about the majority of it, leave about a quarter inch on there. Trim it off. Put down with the heat. Now your heated blade. Poop. Also be very careful because you're using a sharp blade that has been heated. Like you literally took the two greatest hazards and put them together. 
can you get it 100 percent yeah, or at least you get three quarters pliers boom see how it snapped off then if you want to you can clean it up around the edges because i'm going to just make sure it sits please be very very careful you're using a sharp object please be very very careful work and also if you and also I'm not gonna have a whole bunch in there I put the majority in and also I trim this down so I have a little bit more space and actually I'm gonna trim this off that's also in the person's box cutter just to cut this down but of course you have scissors use your scissors go to the bottom then just gotta make this get in boom so now you have your needle attached to your main body of your syringe. Then you want to add your plunger portion and install. Boom. Now you're probably wondering, well, wait, wait, we're still short a whole part. A whole part. This doesn't look right. It doesn't look too bad. It looks shitty, realistically. But it's like we're still missing a little plunger piece, a little pressure piece. Correct. And that because this is really the easiest part and this also requires the most hot glue. So you're gonna take this piece and this piece, put this on here. You're gonna have to open up a little bit depending on the diameter of your pen that you're using. And then I say gauge it according to your thumb, according to your hand, however you're gonna be using your syringe. I say get it that's so it's full I say put it about three quarters of the way up. I'm gonna put it about here. Something I forgot to mention is, depending on how fancy fur you wanna get with this, um, sometimes you can do a little bit of fancy flexi. I'm gonna make it relatively simple. Sometimes I fancy flexi is like bending these prongs, as you can see. I'm gonna do a little bit of tweaky tweak, fancy fence, and then leave that alone. I'm probably just gonna wrap these portions around themselves. I was with a nice, simple, kind of semi-elegant design to it. And then, of course, I'm going to secure it to there with hot glue. Of course, I, mean, I do not have a stand, but I will try and do it as well as on camera as I can. So, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use a little bit of a press of this to get this as tight as possible naturally. This force of friction. And then I'm going to do a bead over the top. Like, I'm just gonna do like one part. Oop, that's a lot. Then I'm gonna do a bead on the back. Boom, that's a fair amount. And then I'm gonna let that harden. Then I'm gonna fill in underneath with the bar. Or in that way. That's what just stays there nice and firm. But basically, once I do that, it's complete. And when I filled in the head, it allows it to compress. Like I'm actually, this is like if I'm using this, like a video, like I press on the plunger, it's gonna compress it down. Now, note, keep in mind, it's only gonna work once. So if you want to have this effect really work, work, without too much different, you want like this, see this thing looks full, full basically. If I were to compress it, I'll do a compression video. Well, I'm, I'm gonna do the compression once I get this properly sealed up. You can see on how it's gonna compress with it. And it's gonna expand back for the most part, but it's not gonna be the same crisp clean 100% as it was before. Go. So you see I just put a little bit on, on the rim on the top and the bottom of the bar so it's not moving around too much. There's a little bit of you know, cleaning up I could do on it, which I probably will eventually. But, you know, so I'm gonna let this uh, harden and not burn me. And I'm gonna just let it cool off. And then do a little compression test just so you can see how it's going to compress down. 
Now, of course, it's not nothing gonna come up the top because that's not how it works. But it's gonna look like it's like if you look like you're catching someone, then squeeze or look like that is going in. Which is why I like these because like it's gonna look better prop wise. And of course, if you're like super dedicated, you see, see this green writing on here on this one, yeah. So you can like totally take that off or if, if you have the skills or something crazy like that, then yeah, you can, but I'm not too worried about it. But yeah, so- This I'm is a little compression. Whoop, of course it's bent, but you know, if you do it correctly, and you know, you have a slightly thicker gauge. See, you see it started to compress and then I had this strong point, but you know, if you do it right, it won't be too bad. Also, it's really thick, but you know. So it, it didn't really return as much. The other one that I had, it worked better, but you know. But yeah, that was my video on how to make a prop syringe. I hope you guys liked it and that it helps you out.